We're excited to bring to you our worship service today. You'll be able to watch some praise and worship. And so just join with us in worshiping the Lord and then you'll learn from God's word the principles that are gonna transform your life. So sit back and enjoy the blessings that God has for you today. Oh, somebody say glory. glory. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, Jesus is alive, isn't he? Yeah. Amen. And because he's alive, we come together here 2,000 years later to look at how the plan of God has been unfolding. And so turn over with me to Matthew 24 and verse 14, and let's look into the Word of God. The, the first part of, of this verse, I want you to see how when Jesus prophesied this about the gospel being preached into the whole world, this was before there was television, before there were iPods and cell phones and internet and satellite dishes on the top of huts, but look at what he prophesied. He said, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be what? Preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then the end shall come. When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth this, let him understand then let them which be in Judea flee to the mountains. So Jesus has been talking about the coming of the eternal kingdom. And he is saying to the disciples this. Now think about this. These 12 disciples and then the other ones that had gathered around the apostles. And, and he's speaking to this group. Now think of the vision. He's seeing America. He's seeing America. He said, this gospel must be preached to America. It must be preached to China. It must be preached in Russia. Oh, praise God. His vision is worldwide in a time and an age when it seemed impossible. How many of you know you couldn't get on a 727 and fly over to another part of the world? But he said the power of the Holy Spirit will come upon my church and it will reach the whole world to every end. They will hear Jesus Christ is Lord. Well, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Think about this prophecy and then Jesus then relating back to Daniel chapter 20 chapter 9 in verses 24 through 27 he goes back and he says now those of you who studied the Bible you know that Daniel has foretold future events and he said Daniel how many of you know that Daniel said in the last days knowledge will increase how many of you know 150 years ago you couldn't fly? You had to fly a kite if you wanted to fly. Amen. But today you can get on a jet and fly all across the world. Jesus goes back. He had been saying, now th there is an understanding of God's timepiece, which is Israel. You know, today in the news, we see Israel is in the center of the news. This tiny nation the size of New Jersey, the state of New Jersey, is yet the center of a lot of the local news and international news that we have, isn't it? Because, you see, it is what we keep our eye on. You know, the Lord said, when you see, the, 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 he had already prophesied that Israel would become a nation. They came from all over the world back into Israel in 1948. And he said, when you see the blossoming of the fig tree, the fruit tree, he says, then you will know that you're getting near the coming of Jesus Christ's second coming. So Daniel had seen it, and he had foretold about the events that would take place. And he said, there's going to be 77s. Now, the, now in the uh, translation, it says weeks. But in the Hebrew, it means a period of seven. And what most scholars believe that is seven years. So 490 years from the time our King Artaxerxes said that we're going to go and rebuild the, the, temp, the uh, wall in the temple in Jerusalem 
He said there will be 490 years that will happen. So turn over with me in your Bibles to Daniel. And let's look at Daniel chapter 9 and verses 24 through 27. You know, God's Word always has an answer, doesn't it? Whatever the situation is, God's Word. Now, I want you to see the way that this all comes together. Seventy weeks are determined upon the people and upon the holy city to finish the transgressions, to make an end of sins. <laughs> Listen to this. To make an end of what? Sins. And to make reconciliation for iniquity. And to bring in everlasting righteousness. And to seal up the vision and the prophecy. And to anoint the most holy. So there's going to be this 490 years of which he breaks down. He says, know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and build Jerusalem unto Messiah, the prince shall be seven weeks and threescore and two weeks, and the street shall be built again, and the wall even will be torn down. After threescore and two weeks, the Messiah shall be cut off. This means killed. See, this is the two comings of Jesus that were, Daniel saw that the Messiah would rule and reign over the world, but first he must go to that cross. But not for himself and for the people of the prince shall, shall come, shall, he shall the, the, uh, that it shall be destroyed the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood, and to the end of the war of desolations are determined. So here he's talking about that there's going to be the destruction of the temple that we know happened in 70 A.D. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. Now, this is the, the Antichrist. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice of the oblation to cease and the overspreading of abominations. He shall make it desolate even until the con consummation and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. So what he's saying here is that there's going to be 69 sevens, which is 483 years, to the coming of Jesus, the Holy One being anointed in the holy city of Jerusalem. Hallelujah. You see, God had foretold that from that time the Messiah would come. Now, how can there be any doubt who else has fulfilled that prophecy that within that time period he came, he died on a cross, cross for your sins. This was told hundreds of years before the event. Aren't you glad you know a God who has this whole universe under control? Praise the Lord. I'm not worried about a meteorite coming out of the sky and destroying us because I know Jesus Christ has his hand upon us. Every one of us, we're in the hand of God. Oh, he's got the whole world in his hands. I learned it when I was a little boy. Hallelujah. And he still has the whole world in his hands. Amen. Amen. Oh, watch out. I might start singing it. He's got the whole world in his hands. 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 Thank you, Lord. Now, God had foretold to Abraham, he said, through your seed, all nations, how many? All, all nations will be what? Amen. Blessed <laughs> through the seed of Abraham, Amen. through the seed that was the lion of the tribe of Judah, Amen. through the seed that was the bright and the morning star. Through this seed that was the fairest of 10,000 to my soul. Through this seed would come the Messiah, the King of kings and the Lord of lords who would bless not just Israel, but Israel would be the vehicle through which the Messiah would come and there would be joy to the world. The Lord has come. Let earth receive her King. Oh, let's rejoice today. The King Jesus has come from glory down to this earth to meet you right where you live. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He comes and he knocks on your door. He knocks on your door. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. He that openeth the door, I will come in and abide with him and sup with him and he with me. I like to sup with people, don't you? You know. 
<laughs> oh, yeah, the Lord loves to come in and hang out a while. Oh, he'll come right in to where you live. Hallelujah. So the Lord said, I have designed all of this and put Israel as my timepiece so that you can see how I'm working through Israel for the 483 years. But he said, now there's going to be also a different 70th year, which is the last seven years that we know is the seven years of what? Tribulation. And that seven years of tribulation is going to come at the end. But he said, right now we're in the church age. There's a dispensation of time. You see, there's intervals of time in the Bible. God, God is eternal. There is no time with God. But yet God has laid out a plan for this earth. Hallelujah. And how many of you know that for God so loved the world that he that whosoever believeth upon him should not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. He said, Daniel said, he's going to take care of the sin problem. <laughs> he said, it is finished. My sins are gone. It is finished. Hallelujah. I don't have guilt today. How many of you know there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus? For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and of death. For what the law could not do, weak as it was through our flesh, God did. What I couldn't do, God did for me. Hallelujah. What I couldn't do for myself, he did. Sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. As an offering for sin, he condemns sin in the flesh in order that the requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. He's saying, if you walk according to the spirit today, you don't walk in guilt. Woo, hallelujah. I tell you what, I've not been perfect, but you know what? Right now, when God looks at me, he sees me through the blood of Jesus. He says, there's my son. I love that old boy. Amen. Woo! Hallelujah. I love you. He's saying it to you in your spirit right now. Hallelujah. Somebody else might have said, oh, he's looking down on you. Somebody else might have said he came to condemn you. But before John 3, 16 is John 3, 15. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. I've got good news for the world. That's the gospel that was preached all around the world. Because Jesus said in, the, in this time period of the church, my gospel is going to go across the world. And all you Gentiles... Oh, Oh, praise the Lord. He said, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon you. Hallelujah. For in the last day, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon how much? All flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Young men will have visions. And upon my servants and my handmaidens will I pour out of my spirit. So you know what? I'm in that group. You're in that group, aren't you, brother? I know. <laughs> Hallelujah. I know you're in that group because God said, I'm going to pour out my spirit. That means you get drenched. How many of you ever try to run out here when a, one of these thunderstorms comes through and you try to make it to your car real fast? You forgot your umbrella. You forgot you lived in Florida. Amen. And you made a, you made a run for it. Amen. Oh, you got drenched. Hallelujah. You know the Lord wants to drench you in the spirit. Oh, praise the Lord. Some of you said, well, how will my hair look? Glory oh, to God. It don't matter. What matters is you get filled full and overflowing and you get joy way down deep in your soul. You know, I learned another one. I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart. Down in my heart. I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart to stay. Hallelujah. Well, give the Lord praise. I like it. I like it. I, I tell, you know what? Hallelujah. We're going to be together all, for all eternity. 
And we're going to say, hey, remember that Sunday when we were down there and the Holy Ghost got poured out and we got, I got filled with the Spirit? Somebody walk up to me and say, you remember that day when I came and I received Jesus in your church and now I'm right up here with you for all eternity? Oh, it's, I tell you what, it's all right to get happy. Amen. You know, some happy will do you good. Hallelujah. Amen. You ever laugh in the Holy Ghost? Oh, yeah, you laugh way down deep in your soul. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Aren't you glad? It's joy unspeakable and full of glory. Aren't you glad today that Jesus Christ split history in half, B.C. and A.D., and he's in the center of it. Amen. Hallelujah. So you see, the Lord said, I'm going to come, and I'm going to minister, and I'm going to take care of the sin problem. I'm going to be the anointed holy one. Daniel said he will be cut off. Daniel foretold the Messiah would be crucified. Amen. 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 Isaiah 53, surely he hath borne our griefs and carried away our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. Isaiah foretold, didn't he? Daniel and Isaiah. You see, Jesus came to fulfill his mission at the, at the end of the 483s from years from King Artaxerxes saying to rebuild Jerusalem until the cutting off of Messiah. And he said, now you're in the latter reign. <laughs> now, I, I, like, I like this latter reign. This is what I'm talking about, this drenching. You see, we're in the latter reign. Hallelujah. You know, some people talk about the good old days, but I got news for you. There's some good now days too. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm walking in good now days. I'm not living on what happened last week or last month or last year or last 10 years. I'm living on what the Spirit's doing in me right now. Hallelujah be unto God. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody told me the other day, said they brought their, ki their kid and he heard me preach and he got bored. I said, well, that's the first time I've heard that. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Glory, that's like being bored. With, if you're saved and you're going up in the rapture, that ain't boring, brother. That's exciting. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see, the Lord is coming back, and that's what, what Daniel's prophesying. He's saying, I want you to be ready. And, he said, and the Lord has said, I want you to see when these signs are happening. He said, you can tell when a storm's coming up. Now he said, I want you to see these signs in the sky. You know, we saw the red moon not long ago. We see different signs that are happening. And so I don't know the, the day nor the hour. None of us do. The Lord told us no one would know the day nor the hour. But he said, get ready. Get ready. Get ready, like that song says, and he's coming back again. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. So you see that last seven years, when, when there's going to be this time period, that will be when Israel will finally fulfill the ultimate purpose because there will be 144,000 Jews that will be receive Christ and from each 12,000, from each of the 12 tribes, and they'll be out spreading the good news that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. I heard a rabbi one time. He said, you know, Jesus might, he said, Jesus just might be the Messiah. He said, but I'm not convinced. He said, but when he comes, if he comes, he said, I will bow down and worship him. So you see, there's going to be some like that 144,000 that when the Lord returns to catch his church away, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. With a what? Is it all right to shout? <laughs> I'm going to act like the Lord and I'm going to shout <laughs> some praises to God. 
For the Lord himself shall descend from he from where? From heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, have I got a bright future? Have you got a bright future? Oh, yeah, sometimes when you start thinking about how you got a little rough patch, just start thinking about, <laughs> say, hey, I, I'm anointed. I'm highly favored. I'm blessed beyond belief. I, I'm heading to heaven, and right now I'm going to take some people with me because they're going to see that God loves them as much as I know he loves me. Hallelujah. You see, he loves me. I know he does because I know how much I love my kids, and he said, I love you more than you love your kids. I just look at him and say, oh, don't she look good? You do yours too. I looked, at, I looked at that little grandbaby the other day, and it just reminded me of the first time I looked at Deanna, and now I'm looking at Deanna's little Livy, and I'm just saying, wow, God. Wow. I can make some pretty kids. Amen. There's hope for all of us. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Debbie said, that's the prettiest baby I've ever seen. I said, Debbie, I said, most babies, they all pretty much look alike when they're, when they're just a day or two old. And she said, oh, no, they're not. She said, I've seen some ugly babies. <laughs> I said, you're right, honey. <laughs> Say it again. <laughs> you're right. Amen. But you know what? That, that's why the, this glorious gospel of Jesus Christ is so glorious. I was talking with somebody the other day, and when I was eating at a restaurant, and it was catered to vegetarians, and of course, they also had some meat for me and other people, but you know, but it was a great little restaurant. Out, we went out in the parking lot, and this lady was recommending another vegetarian restaurant, and, and so I said, well, how long have you been a vegetarian? She said, about 17 years. I said, well, let me ask you a question. Why is it you became a vegetarian? She said, well, she said, I believe I'm going to come back as a chicken or, or a goat or something. And she said, you know, they're not, cheat, they're not cheat treating the chickens real good right now in the chicken coops. And she said, I'm upset about it because I'm coming back as one. And I thought, well, if I, no wonder she's a vegetarian. She answered my question. But I wished I had a little longer to talk with her about, well, let me tell you about what Jesus said, what I'm expecting. I'm not going to be in a chicken coop. God, I'm going to be in a mansion, and I'm going to have all my friends and relatives right there with me. I'm going to have a glorified body. I won't be squawking. I'll be talking about the King of kings and the Lord of lords in a glorified body. Hallelujah. That will not have any limitations, but I'll be able to walk through walls. I'll be able to soar on new heights. I'll be able to explore this whole universe because I've got forever and ever and ever, and I'm going to be like my my Lord Jesus. Beloved, see how great a love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we might be ch called the children of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Oh, man. So you see, when the Lord comes back after his church, when God continues, see, God's been watching over Israel. You know, I, I tell you what, look at all the armies that have gathered around them, but yet no one has taken them down. You see, God's watching over them. They're part of his plan and purpose, you know, and we love all people. We want to see all people blessed. As he said, God said, through your seed, through Jesus, all. How many? All. all nations. Whoever receives this Messiah will be blessed. Oh, aren't you glad you're blessed to know him today?
See, I got a personal relationship with him. I, got, I can talk to God through God's son, Jesus. And the same, this is what God revealed to me. Just like God said to his son, you're my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. When I identify with Jesus, identification with the second Adam, the Bible calls Jesus the one who overcame. He said, when you become one with him, the father looks at you and he is happy. He smiles. Don't, don't let your imperfections make you doubt that he's smiling upon you right now. You see, when I was singing that song earlier and he was just pouring out his spirit in me, he was smiling upon me. And he said, I love to just bless you real good. I love to just bring you close. I love to just help you to know who I am. Because you see, I know Jesus like you do. He's revealed himself to me. He's revealed himself to you. And you know what? <laughs> Aren't you glad you know him today? Let's stand and give him the praise. Lord, we bless you in this house. We give all glory. Praise God that you're able to be with us in our program today. You know, the Lord cares about what's going on in your life right now. He's speaking to your heart. So just open up and just say, God, I'm here. I'm available for whatever you have for me to do, Lord. I want you to pray this prayer with me at this time. Father God, I thank you right now that I feel your presence. I feel your spirit. I feel your love. I feel your mercy. I feel your grace. And right now, God, I know you're at work in my life. And Lord Jesus, I thank you that you're working out this situation I'm praying about. I don't know how. I don't know when. But God, I'm just trusting in you. And I know that you're working all things together for the good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. And God, that you can take whatever I'm going through. And God, you can bring something good out on the other side. Lord, and I know, God, that your healing presence is within me right now. And I receive your healing into my life. Lord, I thank you for it. I thank you that you bore those stripes on your back for my healing. And Lord, I receive your ministry into my life right now in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, if you prayed this prayer today, you can look forward to seeing how God is going to open up doors. God's going to work the situations out. Just continue to trust in Him because, you know, God is a loving Heavenly Father. Every good and perfect gift comes from above, from the Father of lights, of whom there is no variableness nor shadow of turning. He's your God today. He is for you. And if God be for us, who can be against us? So we're praying for God's richest blessings in your life. If you don't have a church home, we'd love to invite you out to our church at the Souls Harbor Church at 451 West Helen Avenue in Punta Gorda, Florida. You know, the Lord is doing some wonderful things here as he is in many other churches. And so come and join us and you'll find an embrace You'll find the love of God and you'll find the peace that Jesus brings. So, until we speak again, we'll be praying for God's richest blessings upon you and your family. Have a great day.